love with the idea of being in love more than the reality of it. That is it. I'm more in love with the concept uh, of being in love rather than the reality of it. Um, it's the same approach I take to baths. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean by that? Like, the idea of a bath is f***ing incredible, <laughs> but the reality of a bath is that you are hot <laughs> and you're wet and you're alone with your thoughts, okay? <laughs> That is literal hell to me, right? I go into a set of negative meditation when I get to it. <laughs> My therapist is like, that just sounds like mild depression. And I was like, potato, potato. <laughs> Same deal. <laughs> what about MD, little house MD? <laughs> mild depresso. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I go to my therapist a lot, and it's so funny because most of the things I talk to her about are usually about relationships because I think that's what stems most of my anxieties and stuff. And she says the same, she says the same thing to me every time, every single time. She's like, Rose, Rose, what your, pro what your problem is is that you're, you're obsessed with things that have happened in the past and things that might happen in the future, but you're never just in the moment. That's, you're never just living in the moment. So all you got to do, all you got to do, all you got to do is you got to live, you live in the moment. You got to live in the moment, Rose. And every time I hear that, I'm like, that's incredible advice. Thank you so much for that. What saved wise advice. And then another part of me, very deep down, thinks, how am I paying you 60 <laughs> British pounds <laughs> to tell me something I could buy on the front of a <laughs> notebook from Primark? <laughs> medical professional. What the f is wrong with you? And she's like so wrong about so many things. She also said after the last long-term relationship I got out of, all of the feelings of like euphoria and all these happy feelings I was describing to her, she would actually technically describe that as mania. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I feel amazing! <laughs> I got rid of her. Because uh, <laughs> she just didn't, she wasn't on my wavelength, but she, she, she was right about one thing, and I will give her this, and that she, I, do, I do obsess over things that haven't necessarily happened yet. I do obsess about scenarios that haven't uh, happened yet because I like to prepare for the worst, right? And I, <laughs> I do have this recurring fantasy about, it's like an awesome scenario to like workshop if anyone is interested. It's the scenario of me finding out that my ex-boyfriend is seeing someone new. That is like, mm, it's delicious, you should try it. <laughs> it's, because I, I practice it because when that happens, I wanna be Glamorous as hell when it happens. Right? I want to be like Catherine Hepburn when that bombshell drops. And I've thought about it to like the smallest detail. Like it's crazy. Like I, ideally, I'll show you. I'll just show you. I, I, ideally, when it happens, I'll ho be holding something, right? Like I'll be like doing the dishes or doing like a little bit of like little chores or something. And and so <laughs> as soon as the person, like my friend, tells me that my ex-boyfriend is seeing someone new, this is exactly how I react. I have practiced this. Okay. <clears throat> Eliza. <laughs> what a lovely name. <laughs> I must send a telegram. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just, it's just like that. Don't, don't clap it because it's actually not okay, right? You're enablers if you clap, right? That's, because that's not, that's not normal behavior and it never happens. You can't plan how that's gonna happen. It always happens in the worst possible situation. It always happens on your f***ing, on a bus on the way to West London, you're about to get your hair cut and you cry all the way through the haircut and you have to pretend you're allergic to a hair dryer, okay? <laughs> that's how it happens. 